ice bass. That's a good one there. Pretty large now on the Bronco bug. You know, there's a lot of boats on the water today. And one of the main reasons, I was gonna flip the cleanup crawl, but it's pretty, the cleanup crawl is a, you know, more of a standard type of a bait. It's got a really good kick in action, but you know, a lot of people flip baits like that. A lot of people flip beaver baits. This bait right here, the Bronco bug, is very, very unique, has a very unique swimming action. Whenever it's in the water, it actually undulates while it's falling. So the legs kind of wave back and forth. So with a lot of boats being on the water today and not much current, really want to throw something unique, especially in this clear water. They get a really good look at it. Feel like if you're gonna fish around people a lot, it's the best throw something that the fish haven't seen before, you know? And it almost breaks my heart a little bit that everybody's gonna have those because they have been absolutely catching them on that thing for the past few months. I mean, they've been crushing the Bronco bugs. It seems like today, especially, the fish are more predictable than I thought they would be. You know, I've gotten around the mouths of some of these cuts and just inside some of these cuts and it seems like the large mouth that I've caught have been on the isolated wood right in front of these little cuts. So the structure that I've been fishing has been a lot different, vastly different. Caught one off a log, one off a root ball, you know, but as far as where they're set up in relation to the actual contours and the lake and the backwaters and stuff, that's been pretty consistent, you know? It's not as much about the cover as it is about how the cover relates to other things. Anytime you're fishing river systems, moving water is the key, you know? And I feel like the main reason for that is, like whenever you're on a lake, those fish pull up, and a lot of times they pull up shallow with the intention of, of eating and feeding and stuff like that. They're usually a round bait. In a river system, they don't really have as many options. So a lot of them have to live shallower. Well, whenever a lot of them live shallower, they're not eating all the time. So current is exceptionally important on river systems. That's what positions the fish, makes them eat, it brings the bait fish to them a lot of times. And, and that kind of makes the whole world go round on river systems. So whenever they're not pulling water, it gets extremely tough to catch them on reaction baits and stuff like that. So for me, a lot of times I like to slow down and just pick apart the areas where I know the fish are sitting. Because a lot of times, whenever they're not pulling water, the water will actually drop a foot or two. You know, like today, the water's pretty low. If they just turn the water on, it's actually gonna make it, because the river's so narrow and these dams are so big and these lakes are big, it'll actually make the water rise a little bit. And whenever it rises some, those fish can spread out and they'll get up there in them undercuts and they'll get on the bank and all kinds of stuff. But whenever there's not any current, the water's a little bit lower, there's a lot more isolated targets where the fish have to get on. And a lot of times you can hit those targets with reaction baits, but you can't generate enough bites. So it seems like for me, I like to go a lot slower and pick apart the places where I know the fish have to sit. That's what I'm doing today with a lot of these bigger laydowns and root balls and stuff like that. I'm just picking them apart. But if I'm just fishing root balls or, you know, a little stick or something up there on that drop, I'll just pitch in there, let it go to the bottom, and then pretty much reel it back in. But like if I've got a long laydown, I'll kind of work it down it, just in case there's a fish sitting on a different position on the, on the cover than I initially hit. But for the most part, I just flip it in there, let it go to the bottom one time, and. Maybe the guide or they don't. They usually, they usually pick it up on the fall or right after it hits the bottom. I think a lot of times they'll follow it down to the bottom and then pin it up against the bottom as soon as it gets there. Because whenever there's no current, they can suspend a lot more. Whenever there's current, they have to get tight to stuff. So if they're suspended in that tree, they'll just follow it down. Spotted bass. Pretty consistent to the pattern right there. Up there just on that first drop, we'll keep her spot. Big root ball up there, just flip right on the other side of it. Pretty much fit right into the pattern. We're getting close to a creek mouth, even though the spots don't really go into the creeks all that much, but it was just on a root ball on a small secondary point right beside a little drop. And I mean, just flipped up in there, never made it to the bottom. Got him up out of there. A little large mouth. 
So he's a small one, but man, that is a fun way to catch him. He might be a keeper, maybe not, but anytime you got a seven foot six rod in your hand and big line, I mean, that is a fun way to catch them. This right here is a 13 fishing muse, seven foot six, heavy. We got 22 pound Sunline Shooter fluorocarbon on there. That's kind of the sweet spot for me for heavy cover, but not being overbearing line, like 25 pound line, sometimes it messes with your fall rate a little bit, kind of holds that bait up. It doesn't slide in and out quite as good. At 22 though, still plenty strong, unless you're in some super, super gnarly stuff, but we got as fast of a reel as we can get. This is an 8.3 to one Concept C from 13. I mean, that's, that's the deal right there. That is the flipping setup. This has done a little bit of damage today. All right, so this right here is the Bronco Bug from Crust City. You know, it's pretty uniform on both sides, but it does have eyes right here on the top. So I always rig the eyes up at first. You know, I've caught fish on them both ways catch a fish or two, flip it around and rig it the other way. But I always rig it with the eyes up to start. And that's the Bronco bug. So this is a five alt straight shank Gamakatsu flipping hook, half ounce tungsten. Got a little bobber stop on there. Just a standard flipping setup. Green pumpkin, pretty standard color. I've got other colors, candy bug right here. You know, any kind of dark color and then a green pumpkin, that's the two staples. I don't keep a lot of crazy colors in the boat. I just want something that's a little bit more natural and then something that has really good visibility and a little more stained water. So keep you a green pumpkin, keep you a dark color, and that's it. A lot of the hard hitting stuff, the points and places where I normally catch them in the current, I haven't, they haven't really been producing today, but it seems like a lot of these largemouth are hanging out pretty tight to these backwaters, you know, the first 10, 15 yards into a creek and right on the main river out in front of it. So that's really been where almost all of my largemouth bites have came from today. If I had more current today, you know, that, that, that would make the flipping bite a decent amount better. But the thing it makes them do is it makes them tuck really, really tight behind cover. They get up in the log jams really good. They get, you know, in them root balls. Well, whenever there's a lot of current, the strike zone is shrunken a lot. But the reason for that is they get really, really tight to cover and you can really pick out where those fish are gonna sit. So I'll be flipping like really tight and close to the dot posts that are breaking the current the edge of the grass that's breaking the current, you know, any kind of wood or anything that's really getting pounded with the current. So even though the fish are in a smaller spot, it's a lot more easy to predict it. Like it's, it's very easy to predict it when, whenever you're going down the bank. So, and usually when there's one there, you, you know it really, really quickly because they bite whenever they're in there under those conditions. There's one in the grass, little keeper large mount. Man, that's a fun bite. Catch one out of grass, one off a of rock, one off wood, everything. That's what makes flipping so special. Ooh, good save there. We got a little chunky thing. You think they ain't eating bait? They gotta be here. So, pretty little large mount, just healthy. It's one thing about main river fish usually is they're really, really healthy. So a lot of times this technique's gonna be when they're super tight to cover everything, like super precise and pinpoint. And I wish that was the case all the time, but when, when you don't have optimal conditions, like we don't today, we, we're lacking current on a lake that revolves around current. A lot of times you just gotta lock it in your hand, fish around until you figure out how to get a bite. Then after you figure out how to get a bite, there actually be a pattern to it a lot of times. So today we found out a little bit of a pattern. We're catching them pretty consistently on the same types of structure every single time, right in front of these little cuts. And you know, if, if we wouldn't have just locked it in our hand and fished down the bank, we would have kind of never figured out that pattern. So pretty glad we figured that out. We just got to do it by, by fishing with baits you're confident in, you know?